this past school vacation week in April, the Helen Y. Davis Leadership Academy students were among the first in the city in decades to visit Cuba. Now, 23 middle school students traveled to Cuba as part of the school's travel abroad program. It was an eight-day educational experience that exposed students to Afro-Cuban history and culture. Now, it did include visits to Old Havana, New Havana, historic forts, and national monuments. The Helen Y. Davis Leadership Academy is a tuition-free 6th to 8th eighth grade middle school located right in the Fields Corner section of Dorchester with, get this, 80%, 86% of students African American culture or Caribbean with another 13 being Latino. So that's 99%. To tell us more about their school and their experience in Cuba is Karma. Carmela. I got it. Carmela Sherwood. She's the executive director of the school. And Natalie Campbell, she's a sixth grader at the school. Uh, welcome, and uh, thanks for coming by. Uh, thank you for having I'm us. I'm excited to hear because, as you know, my father's Cuban, so I want to hear this wonderful experience. But before we get to what a wonderful school you have, give me your elevator pitch when people ask, me about, uh, ask you about the school. Well, as you said, we're a six through eight middle school, tuition free. Um, we're a leadership school, and many of the things that we do at the school are focused on building leadership in our students. So travel is part of that. And um, we do a lot of traveling, community service. Um, we do um, different things in the community to help build leadership in our students. I'm curious, um, and I know the answer to one of the students, but were a lot of this, you know, for many of these kids, was their first time traveling abroad? Yes, for some of them, it was their first flight. First flight. Their first flight. So it was a very exciting time, and this was the first time I actually traveled with the students. So. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right, cool. let's get let's get to Campbell. Okay. Call you by your last name in school, right, Campbell? Yeah. I just want to make you feel at home. All right. How you doing, Campbell? I'm doing fine. So tell me a little bit about this trip. What was your favorite part of visiting Cuba? Um, my favorite part about visiting Cuba was riding horses because, like, it was like it was just amazing. Like, I never got to ride horses because it's it's just amazing. Like, everything over there was amazing. Like, yeah, I'm I can't... looking at a picture of our boy here. I know he got sick. And what's his name? Um, Isaiah um, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Emmanuel Osgood. Yeah, he was. Uh, he got scared on the flight, right? Okay. You can talk about him. Don't worry. He won't get embarrassed. He's not here. <laughs> Did you get a little scared on the flight? Yeah, like when we were going up, and then like the plane just dropped, and then it went up again, and it was just terrible. Uh, <laughs> but the trip, but it was worth it, right? Yeah, it was worth it. Now I got to come back to you because you went with twenty-three kids. Yes. Uh, eight days. Eight days. And no problems. <laughs> no problems. We actually have a person. Uh, at the school who's our humanities coach, uh, Sophia Boyer, and she does a lot of the planning of all of our uh, international trips. So she had everything down to a science. We took 23 students and we came back with 23 <laughs> students. <laughs> yeah, that's important to come back with all of them. Very uh, important. Now you have other trips planned though, right? And, and you've been to other countries, oh, right? Oh, yes. We've, um, students have been to Kenya, uh, Senegal, Guatemala, uh, Ghana. And um, actually, I've been to China, so I'm hoping that at some point we'll be able to take some students to China. But Kenya is a trip that's uh, on the docket for next year, so we're very, very excited about that. And Sophia Boyer will be planning that. Um, she does an amazing job uh, planning the trips for, for students and staff. So we're looking forward to Kenya next year. Mm. How about yourself? Can you tell me about kind of what's your favorite part of school? I know you have a couple of teachers there that you want to give a shout out to. Yeah. So you want to give a shout um, out? I want to give a shout out to Ms. Boyer for letting us have this amazing experience of taking me to Cuba and my peers. And I want to give a shout out to Mr. Maris for being the best science teacher a sixth grader can ever have. And I want to give a shout out to Ms. Wine. She has an amazing voice. She designs like all dances and like in school events that we have, like African History Month and um, well, that's, you give Kwanzaa. A lot of and there's a whole bunch of different things that I can't remember that we do in school. That's good. What's your favorite subject in school? That's a hard one. Um, I think I'm gonna go with science because like. It's, it's not only about experiments, but like learning about the Earth, how the Earth has changed over millions and millions of years and how the Earth always started. Um, I think it's just like fascinating how we get to learn about our history and 
it's just amazing. Hey, I think you're doing a great job. Look at this young person. First time oh, on television, God. and she's stealing the show. Stealing she's the show. She's doing a better job than you and I. I'm sorry. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me a little bit more. Um, how did you get involved with the school, and really, really what motivated you to become, you know, its, its leader? Well, I've been at the school uh, since its inception in 2003. So our school is going on 15 years um, old in the fall, and I've been there the whole 15 years. Um, one of the things that was so important for me is giving students an opportunity to really know who they are, um, their history, and that gives them um, a, a focus in terms of who they can become in the future. So uh, it's very, very important for me to make sure that all of our students get experience of experiences of a lifetime um, that will help them along their academic journey and their journey as just being good human beings in our society today. In that area, um, I mean, it's a diverse area, but you know, yes. it, it's mostly um, our community, right? Latino, African American, Caribbean, and that's reflected in your student body. Yes, yes it is. Um, we really focus on making sure that we have a diverse group of students, be they um, ESL students, um, special needs students, high, you know, uh, we want all of our students to be high achieving. Some of them are very, very academically astute. We have a national junior honor society at our school. So uh, we just want to make sure that we set a foundation for all children to be the best they can be and become future leaders of our world. How does a, how does a parent go about enrolling a, a child at your school? Um, you can actually uh, go online. Okay, so you have a website. We have a website, www.dla. Dot cps dot org. Dot org. and um, people can go online and apply. We do have a lottery, and, but if we have a lot of st students applying, we will have a second lottery. So, and just for uh, for people to know the name, with, how does uh, that come into play? The name Davis Helen, Helen Davis. Y Davis Leadership Academy was named after a woman who was very academically astute. Um, she was an entrepreneur in Boston, did a lot of things for a lot of people in Boston, and wanted to make sure that she was helping to build future leaders. So it's very, very appropriate for the school to be named after a woman that was so instrumental in making Boston a great place. Well, listen, great job. You guys both did great. Campbell, you did awesome. Thank high you. five. You went high five. All right, well, listen, uh, we'll probably get you back on another time, especially after you go on another trip. You come oh, back. Okay, All we right. would love to. All right, maybe I'll sneak on the plane. Yeah. <laughs>